Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on common pathologies associated with MRI exams of the spine. In this lesson, we will look at some routine pathologies seen in MRI. It is important to remember there are many pathologies seen in MRI. These are just a few common ones a technologist should be familiar with. Let's get started. First, let's address some pathologies of the intervertebral discs. Due to MRI's superior ability to demonstrate soft tissue structures, pathologies associated with discs are common indications for an MRI scan. Patients may also have a bulging disc in which there is a weakened area in the annulus fibrosus, causing a portion of the disc to protrude where the weakened area is. A herniated disc is when the annulus fibrosus has ruptured and the nucleus pulposus is squeezed outside of the disc. Bulging and herniated discs can cause issues as sometimes they protrude posteriorly, where they will press on spinal nerves, causing a variety of symptoms including pain, tingling, or numbness. As we age, these discs may degenerate with a reduction of cushioning in the nucleus pulposus. The discs may further degenerate into a very thin disc, resulting in portions of the vertebral end plates to rub against each other, which is called degenerative disc disease, DDD. A secondary pathology to thinning discs resulting in the vertebral end plates rubbing against each other is osteophyte formation, or bone spurs. These will cause the end plates to have a rippling appearance rather than a flat appearance. A key image weighting for disc pathologies is a T2 weighted image, or a stir image. This demonstrates the bulging disc as dark compared to the bright CSF fluid. For degenerating discs, the signal is reduced in the center as compared to healthy discs. Other bony pathology issues include scoliosis, which is the lateral curvature of the spine. A coronal image will demonstrate the lateral curvature best. Kyphosis, which is the posterior curvature of the spine. Kyphosis is common in elderly female patients and appears as a rounded back, usually in the thoracic area, and a stooped appearance. A secondary pathology to kyphosis is a compression fracture. These occur when the vertebral bodies collapse on themselves. It is common in patients with osteoporosis or extreme kyphosis. Additionally, for patients with cancer, metastatic bone lesions may occur from a primary cancer that has spread to the spine. The metastatic lesions appear as darkened areas within the vertebral bodies. Contrast media would be needed for this pathology and the metastatic lesions would appear bright post-contrast. Finally, there are pathologies associated with the spinal canal that are important to know. First, stenosis is a pathology that a technologist would routinely see. This is a narrowing of the spinal canal which puts pressure on the spinal nerves and can result in pain, tingling, or numbness to the area that is affected. On a T2-weighted image, this will appear as a reduced amount or narrowing of CSF in the areas around the stenosis. A Chiari malformation and a secondary pathology of a syrinx may be a clinical pathology seen in the cervical spine. A Chiari malformation occurs when the cerebellar tonsils protrude through the foramen magnum. A secondary pathology from Chiari malformation is the syrinx. This is a hollow tube formed in the spinal cord that fills with CSF fluid. If a patient has multiple sclerosis, often a brain scan is ordered, but MS plaques can also spread to the C and T spine. For these patients, a sagittal flare may be added to the protocol. On the flare waiting, the lesions would appear as brighter plaques within the cord. Thanks for watching. This has been an overview of common pathologies associated with the spine.